Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome VP of Corporate Communications, Qualcomm Technologies Incorporated, Pete Lansky. Many of you are, are familiar with Qualcomm, but, and I mean it to the bottom of my heart, we at Qualcomm, engineers, marketing, executive team, everyone at the company takes pride in developing breakthrough technologies that really spur invention. For over 30 years, we have been at the center of technology shifts, whether it be analog to digital, 3G to 4G, the desktop compute to mobile compute, and now we're embarking on the transition of 5G. It could be more exciting. So, it's 2019. 2019, the year of 5G. We at Qualcomm have been talking about it and working on it for several years, and we are finally here. 5G has taken a lot of work to accelerate to 2019. From an R&D perspective, course standards work, developing test platforms, working across the ecosystem and developing chips. And we're on the cusp of 5G, we couldn't be more excited. The impact of 5G is going to be significant, not only in 2019, but really moving forward. It's going to transform industries, it's going to enrich lives, it's going to create new jobs. And what it will also do is remove any barriers for invention. When Qualcomm's breakthrough technology will transform lives and enable new industries, we can't wait to see where it takes us. With respect to our Snapdragon 855 mobile platform, and when you pair that with our Snapdragon X50 modem, it will be powering nearly every single 5G device in 2019. Um, and we've talked previously about having 20 or so OEMs that will be launching uh, devices in 2019. Today we are announcing that over 30 plus devices, predominantly smartphones, will be launched in 2019. And a significant part of that is nearly all of these will be using Qualcomm's RF front end solutions. That is from Qualcomm Solutions. We couldn't be more proud of that. Today we are announcing, and Netgear is announcing, that they will be using Qualcomm's uh, Wi-Fi 6 solution as part of their Wi-Fi mesh 4 b solution. And the, the, the list of these technologies is a testament to the traction that we have across the Wi-Fi 6. <coughs> so if we, if we combine both the 5G announcement in terms of the traction with the Wi-Fi announcement, it really shows how we're growing with respect to connectivity. But as everyone's aware, um, the, the show is way broader than, than just connectivity. If you come by our booth, you'll get to see us and all the other solutions, but automotive is a key part of CES. And so I'd now like to introduce the, the main part of our uh, press conference, which is on automotive. I'd like to introduce Patrick Little, the general manager, manager and senior vice president of our automotive business unit. I have to admit it's an incredibly exciting time in automotive and so much has happened over the last few years and uh, I feel a little bit um, beholden to our, our mobile group because so many of those technologies have been inherited from that group and so uh, you know Pete talked about these technologies that we're developing to drive the mobile ecosystem many of those are the same underpinning technologies that are transforming the automotive industry and as an example, I think one that is the most empowering is cellular connectivity. It's the horizontal change agent across automotive right now. Qualcomm is really focused on enabling the automakers to enable their vision of the connected car. But I have to tell you, the number one thing that we're focused on in connectivity is really safety. And so beside all the sexy digital services that we can enable, Cellular V2X technology is something that we're incredibly passionate and excited about. We think it's going to help to transform the world of transportation with automotive. And we also think it's going to save a tremendous amount of lives. Another area that's personally I think is incredibly exciting is what's happening inside the car, the in-vehicle experience. And so those buttons and switches and knobs and all those things you're trying to memorize, those are going to go away very soon. And what you're going to have is a natural voice gesture interface to your car, just a lot more humanizing user experience with the car. And so really, I found in talking with the automakers that consumers want a smartphone experience in their car. And that's what we're helping to deliver, I believe. And so I think one humbling experience or one humbling lesson that we learned over last year is one company cannot do this by themselves. And so, literally, we paired with almost every automaker and every tier one on the planet to be able to vision what does the future of automotive really look like? We're really doing a lot of 
right to left thinking. Not thinking about how can we make our technology important to the world, but what does the world really need to drive safety to a much higher level or to drive that, that in-vehicle that in experience to the next level. And so we're investing in those breakthrough technologies in, in cellular connectivity, high performance, uh, low power computing, AI machine learning is definitely making its way very quickly to personalize the cabin of the car. Uh, in cabin, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is two thirds of them are actually now using our Snapdragon compute as well. And so this has been a pretty wild vertical ride for us with the adoption of our Snapdragon technology and automotive, something that frankly we're quite proud of. We're just very thankful that the relevance of the Qualcomm technology has made its way over to automotive and quite frankly a lot of other adjacent industries to mobile. Uh, and, uh, and I think that we're beginning to make quite an impact in the car and in the automotive industry itself. And so here to talk about in much more depth, what are the announcements we have planned for CES? I'd like to introduce Nicole Duzal, who's our SVP of Product Manager. Thank you, Patrick. Very excited to be here today. When we look at the state of transportation, safety and efficiency in 2019, we actually see a tremendous number of challenges ahead of us. Approximately 1.3 million people lose their lives each year on account of road traffic crashes. Road traffic injuries are the leading cause of death in children and young adults. When it comes to traffic congestion, just in the US alone, the cost and loss productivity exceeded $300 billion last year. However, the legacy v technologies have been around for a number of years. The investment rationale for investing in legacy technologies has also been poor for OEMs. This is a one-off investment that doesn't really have any path to maintenance or upgradability. And for road infrastructure, this legacy V2X technology doesn't really have any synergy with other broader innovation and technological advances taking place in the wireless ecosystem, which makes it very hard for cash-strapped departments of transportation to invest and upgrade their assets. Finding the best technology that is future-proofed and is on a global evolutionary path rather than being stuck with legacy. And Qualcomm has been leading the way over the last two years with several requests. Our global ecosystem is underway delivering CV2X for transportation and safety networks. This will result in safer roads, reduced congestion, newer experiences and services. The barrier of incremental spend for automakers is resolved as several requests gets pre-integrated into the wireless modems that are now part of all telematic systems. Road, road infrastructure deployments find synergy with massive 5G rollouts that are upon us, creating significant savings for states and cities who would otherwise need to spend heavily on a dedicated V2X only one. Our ecosystem is focused on the deployment of CV2X globally. We've seen tremendous traction over the last few years, starting in 2016 when the standard was, the standard was published. We've conducted numerous trials globally in North America, in Europe, Japan, China, uh, Korea, Australia, and of course the US. And these trials have been about proving the readiness of the technology across performance, across reliability, and the overall readiness, we, readiness of being able to deploy CV2X as soon as possible. So these are just a few examples of how the extended range and reliability of several VTX can make roads safe. Qualcomm has been working along with several automakers, the road infrastructure industry, regulators, and various departments of transportation over the last two years to accelerate the deployment of V2X in the US. I am especially proud of the partnership that we've had with the Colorado Department of Transportation, uh, which was our first deployment in the US where Colorado DOT, Panasonic, Ford and CAPS partnered up in June of 2018 to take the 100 RSUs in Denver and light them up to be able to show the capability of this technology. All of this work over the last two years has been building towards some very exciting news that I would now like to uh, invite Don Butler of Ford to share with you. Please welcome Don Butler, Executive Director for Ford Connected Vehicle Platform. And it is an important time in terms of the transformation of the automobile. We are at a key inflection point. And we've talked about this notion of connectivity, connecting our vehicles together. And at Ford, we are rapidly implementing our vision for smart vehicles in a smart world. And it's connectivity that will tie these smart vehicles 
to that smart world. The board is taking an important step today by committing to deploy cellular vehicle to everything technology or CV to X technology in all of our new vehicles that we'll be launching beginning in the calendar year 2022 here in the United States. And that will allow vehicles, traffic signals, and cell phones to connect directly through obstacles, around corners, and as we saw, it's being planned alongside the rapidly developing and building 5G cellular network. This also builds on our prior commitment that we actually announced um, last year to equip all of our vehicles in the U.S. with that core cellular technology before the end of this calendar year. In cb x we also envision it being compatible with our Ford Copilot 360 uh, technology. That's driver assistance technology that's rolling out in our new vehicles as well, passenger cars, SUVs, and trucks. So to my right, you will see our latest concept vehicle, which we are using to showcase Snapdragon Gen 3 platforms in the CES. This one supports a comprehensive suite of displays, cameras, and sensors to offer advanced capabilities that allow automakers to provide truly differentiated experiences based upon our graphics, audio and video IP and DSPs, our camera technology, integrated AI, built-in 4G and 5G modem technology, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and last but not least, several B2X. The first step is going to start the car by going for a driver application step. Jeff, I recognize your face. Please scan your fingerprint. <coughs> Jeff, you are all set. This involved two factors driver identification where Jeff has recognized both for the in carpet camera and Qualcomm's ultrasonic fingerprint sensor technology. As the system turns on, you can see that Snapdragon Gen 3 uses two 30 inch curved displays from our partners at LG Display that stretch across the breadth of the dash. All of these surfaces are running on the same single display and can be personalized and modified for driver and passenger specific needs. I'm also pleased to announce that we have worked with Amazon to bring their complete suite of assets, including Amazon Music, Audible, and Prime TV. And today we'll be running the demonstration using all natural language processing leveraging Qualcomm's Snapdragon voice activation, coupled with Amazon's natural language processing using their intelligent assistant that we all know and love. Jeff, let's play some music. Alexa, play Cat Stevens A Wild World. Wild World by Pat Stevens, starting now on Amazon Music. As you can see, the Snapdragon Automotive Gen 3 platform also supports high resolution displays and distributed content across each surface. We'll now show you maps which will access which you will access using Amazon's voice backing services to give us access to points of interest, gas stations restaurants, hotels, etc. etc. and it allows us to no, interact with that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, find me the nearest restaurants. Here are a few popular restaurants. One, Strip Steak. Two, Reba Irish Club. Three, Poussin's Cantina Las Vegas. And four, Burger Bar. <laughs> Alexa, navigate me to the first one. Getting directions to Strip State at 3950 South Las Vegas Boulevard. Video content is becoming a large part of our lives, both in terms of live streaming as well as offline downloaded content. This will be a major part of the vehicle experience going forward as passengers can now have access to a vast catalog of content accessible over super fast 4G LTE and very soon 5G connections, making the car an extension of the home. Finally, let's see how the car interacts with its environment by showing you some contextual safety demonstrations that are based on several B2X that, we, that Don and I went over in the previous uh, session. For this demonstration, we have a roadside unit that we have integrated with the camera and it is embedded in machine learning from a partner that door. And this setup supports pedestrian detection and it focuses on intent determination. 
What that means is we monitor the motion and the faces of the pedestrians to determine if they are likely to cross the street. On the screen that you are seeing up here, you will actually see passengers and as they show intent to cross the street, the vehicle receives an infrastructure to vehicle alert that highlights that the respect that there is a pedestrian who is likely to cross while the car is waiting. This is an example of where there is no network involvement. This is the direct interaction over several VTOX between the car and the infrastructure uh, because of the requirements, uh, because of the latency requirements that are being brought here. And we expect that next generation infrastructure is going to have cameras equipped at pedestrian intersections so that the focus on intersection safety becomes extremely important as several meters starts to get deployed across the vehicle. With, with that, I'd like to thank everyone and really encourage everyone to come experience Qualcomm as we start off on the uh, into the new convention. Thank you, everyone. Thanks everybody for watching. You guys speak out, and of course, uh, some of you know uh, what's going on uh, on my personal life, which this is very, uh, very close to, to me right now. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching. We're going to be doing some more from the Qualcomm booth tomorrow, and of course, a lot of coverage from uh, CES as we can with the live. Hopefully, the live stream didn't cut out too much, but you can watch this recorded later on on geekazine.com. Geek out, folks. Thank uh you. -huh.